stereotype is that teenagers today are spoiled and lazy. I don't really try to do like community service projects and I don't care about politics. We are busy, I mean with school, some people do find the time, but it's just... They're boring. As teenagers, a lot of people think you're concerned with yourself a lot, and I think it's, it really says a lot when you show that you're not really self-centered and that you care about other people in the commu community as well. We had this little thing. We walked around these neighborhoods picking up all the trash and stuff. We actually went on a church mission to Nicaragua last year for um, poverty-stricken people. Well, I did uh, you know, that Habitat for Humanity. I've done that several times, and then you know, help build with the houses and stuff like that. Setting up love, he had local impact. Like ninth or tenth grade, wasn't too much going to class. Was skipping school, hanging out with my homeboys, not doing a lot of work. You know, I was getting in trouble. When I was 13, my daddy left the house. And you know, it was, you, you try to bottle it up, but you can't bottle it up too much because you know, it's hurting somebody when your father's been there for 13 years and all of a sudden he's just not there anymore. I didn't realize it back then, but I realize it now. I had a lot of anger, like I was getting in trouble in school for no reason, just trying to take out my anger somewhere else. But Ituro's main outlet, football, was cut off when his mom told him he couldn't play again until he got his life in order. That's when he met Jason Mercer, his mentor, and a leader at the Boys and Girls Club. I guess you could say I came, around, came along at the right time, because he didn't really have that male figure consistently in his life. My mom, she didn't let me play sports anymore. And I, Jason was the one I had, I could talk to about it, and he told me what I needed to do. I'd get my grades right, start showing her that I can be responsible by volunteering and stuff. I pushed them to help others in the community, because I really believe when you make others happy, you're happy. So every time he'll go help feed the homeless, I'll be right behind him trying to help feed the homeless. I saw a lot of him and me, a lot of me and him. Turned that anger around into like helping out instead of being so angry at somebody else. Why don't you go out and help him out? What's up, man? How you doing, man? You all right, man? Like the club, man? Y'all like him? Y'all like going swimming? Volunteering at first, I was just trying to get, um, get back to playing sports again, playing football at school and I wasn't too much worried about the people I was affecting. I was just trying to get back with my mom so she would let me play sports. But you know, after you do so much, you can't help but to start loving it because you see the people's lives you're changing. And it's been like a big, big, big difference in my life too. How long y'all been coming? Come on now, let's go. Level two swimmers, put your head to the side. Who's level two swimmers? Just working with the kids, they just, you know, you don't realize it till it's over how much they affect you. And they affect you. I, I, you get so attached to them that you don't want to let them go. Good job, man. Good job, man. Good job, man. Good job. This is a young man who came to one of our camps who was kind of nervous at first. His first time being away from home. He was a little smaller than everybody else. And um, the kids, you know, kind of picked on him being kids. And, you know, he was trying to, trying to cry and go home the first day. And so what I did, I kind of, you know, kind of talked to him, trying to be a little big brother. By the end of the camp, Etoro says the young man had changed completely. He was full of life. All the kids were enjoying him. And I got a picture with me and him, and we throwing the peace sign. So he's looking cool on the camera. For him to, at this point, be doing things with kids, that touches my heart because I definitely feel, I mean, he can say, oh, Jay, you did this. You did. But for him to do, really lets me know that he was listening. Hey, Toro, you fine, man. We just come and talk to you about registering for vote. Are you a registered voter? Nah. Come on, why not, man? You know the importance of voting, man. That's like the biggest thing, because a lot of people complain about the situation they're in, but they don't take, they don't take steps to change the situation they're in. So when problems occur in our neighborhood, we can get together and tell them we all voted for somebody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right, man, look for you to vote, man. All right, man, take care, man. All right, All right Lou. Because people, especially teens, we don't realize how strong our voice is. And we don't always step up when we need to.
Ituro says football is a distant memory now and intends to work for the Boys and Girls Club full time after he graduates from college. Okay, and you have Boys and Girls Club up? Yes, I love football. I, I, I emailed you that too. Because growing up in the club, I've been able to go a lot of places, do a lot of things with a lot of people. A lot of people sacrifice a lot of time for me to be where I'm now, and I feel like now that I'm in a position to give back, it's probably my time. I see you in the water, man. You're doing a good job, I hope so. I think our generation it's like, uh, it seems a lot more like we need more, like there needs to be more role models in the community. So in a sense, I, I think if you get out and you become successful, and I, I think you should go back to your community and give something back so kids will remember you. I mean, there's so many different parts in community service. It's not just helping kids right. or helping or the homeless. Helping I mean, the homeless. it's also peeing up trash, like Habitat for Humanity. Or planting trees and such. People were like, well, be a good Samaritan and help out your fellow man and da 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 And it seems today like everybody is like, watch out for number one. Mm -hmm. We're definitely not as hands-on, I think, as maybe generations before us. I, I don't know, I sort of get more out of helping someone that, you know. that I know or that I've seen before as opposed, yeah. I, don't, I don't get the same out of what some people do for you know, volunteer. It's very impactful. You get to see people's faces. You get to see the reactions of, like, the community or in that in that little section, mm -hmm. like what they did. It's really cool when you see like a change in a kid that you talk to, and like they do what you like. Like if you gave them some advice and you see it like in action, that's the best feeling in the world. I didn't really want to do the first one, and I guess that's where it came from, is I was forced to do, uh, not forced, but not given much of a choice. I had a closed mind about it. I thought it'd be a bunch of dorks up on a roof, um, you know, doing a sloppy job of you know, what a professional could easily do. My husband and I talked about it a great deal before we really pushed, and we really pushed. I went kicking and screaming, my parents made me. In this family, volunteering isn't a choice. For the past three years, Ben Coppage has spent his summers helping to build homes for Habitat for Humanity. I don't know if it's any one thing that makes me want to do this. It's a, a, a combination of many things. It's just fun. You'd really be surprised. A lot of kids say, how can you think all that stuff's fun? You know, um, they choose to go out and drink and uh, do all the other kinds of stuff um, to have fun. We weren't, you know, going to some theme park or, uh, you know, getting paid or anything for this, but uh, it, it surprises a lot of kids after they go on it, because from the outside looking in, it doesn't look like much fun, but from the inside looking out, you never want to quit doing it. Hammering nails, sawing wood all day long, and for no pay, why? One of the main parts about it is the friends you make, you know, up on the roofs or uh, in, a, in some house you're uh, fixing up, um, doing renovation work. You learn a lot more than how to hammer a nail and um, put up sheetrock and stuff. You learn, it, put, it gives a lot of perspective to your life, but uh, also you could, you know, realize other people's needs and um, kind of give back to the community. Ben has a little poster up in his room that says, stand up for what's right even if you're standing alone. And that was a gift to him from his sister because she felt like it kind of just was him. You've got to put yourself and get yourself out of your comfort zone. Otherwise, you're not going to grow. Um, you stay in your comfort zone your whole life. You know, you're going to stay the same size your whole life and never chance to grow. You have to put yourself on the edge to, um, I think, to to make a difference and to further yourself. When he was 16, he volunteered because his parents forced him. Now, three years later, his parents couldn't stop him if they tried. 
Ben Coppage has changed. At some point, you have to take uh, responsibility for yourself and say, I'm old enough to make this decision, and um, I need to start giving back to the community instead of just receiving from it. And at some point, I do think it's very important that the team uh, takes that lead and you know, says, okay, this is my, this is my project now. It's really kind of an indescribable feeling. It's, um, it's very hard to put into words. It's just such a great feeling. It's really hard to put into words, and it's just a, a wonderful feeling. That was, and my thought was, um, you know, I'm proud of the job we did, and I'm glad we could help out. We have a we had a program where I'm sure a lot of other schools had it too. You know, you had to do mandatory community service hours and things like that. And you're talking about community service hours being uh, mandatory. Do you think it should always be mandatory? I don't like, think so. No. Yeah. Well, you know, it's 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 mandatory to go in line with you know the teaching of, of my school. You know, but you know once you go there and you do these things, you kind of see that this is something that you don't mind doing and then you can go on on your, on your own and find other things to do without them having to be mandatory. So I think it helps the kids who need the push in the right direction. I mean, it still helps the community whether you want to do it or not, but um, I don't think you should be forced to. Well, I think you get more out of it, though, if you're doing it for, your, for like, out of your free will, not, not yeah. out of obligation. Right. Well, I think that, you know, of course, you're, you can go to a community service and you can enjoy it, and that can be a reason why you keep going back. But there's also like an obligation for you to be doing these type of things, for you to go to places where you can help people who don't have as much as you. I mean, it's, I think it's everyone's responsibility who have more to help those who have less. But what you should do and what you have to do are two different things. You should help other people and you should try to better your community and you should try to make yourself a better person and in doing so help the people around you but you don't have to do any of that. That's where the difference is. When you're obligated to, I mean sure that obligation makes you start to do it but what makes you continue doing it because you want to. That's why it's called volunteering. You do it voluntarily of your own accord. We sell telephone cards, uh, we rent movies, we sell CDs, it's everything. It's food especially. A lot of people miss the Mexican food, so here's the place. Eat it, say centavos. Seventeen-year-old Becky Flores knows what it's like to be misunderstood. An immigrant, Becky came to America with her family 10 years ago from Mexico. It's so hard not knowing English. It's so hard. I was there, third grade. I, had, I remember it perfectly. Uh, I went into the classroom and my teacher was like, stand up and just say your name, say anything you can uh, in Spanish. And I walked up there and I looked at everybody, new faces, and I was so scared. And in a way I felt bad because I was, I was speaking Spanish and I was like, but they don't understand me. It's, it's worthless. So for her mom and dad, Becky has to translate. Phone calls, shopping trips, letters in the mail. 